Well, it's garage night again, but it's in the daytime. We're going to be doing some stuff outside that involves things that are a little bit noxious and best not done indoors. So we're out in my backyard. I've got here the aluminium subframe off my Kajiva Elephant. This subframe has got pitting and corrosion on it. That's been caused by, you know, exposure to salt and bad weather and all that kind of stuff. This was originally anodized. Anodizing is a kind of treatment where an aluminium part is put in a bath, hooked up to wires, it's a special kind of chemical bath and there's a sort of a controlled electrochemical corrosion goes on. So the anodizing layer that you get is actually a layer of hard corrosion that forms on top of the metal, which is what's been done with this, but unfortunately it doesn't last forever. Um, eventually the weather will get to it depending on the conditions it's exposed to. You'll see coloured anodising as well. Something might be coloured yellow or purple or red because in conjunction with that process you can add a dye. Now I am going to either try and bring this back to that sort of brushed aluminium finish that you can see some remnant of there or I'm going to actually paint it a colour because I'm not confident at the moment that I can bring it back to a finish that's worth, worth preserving. Here you can see where I've applied something that's stripped off the anodizing, then I've polished it with something called a flap wheel, which I'll show you later. And I did manage to strip off, strip it back to a fairly rough surface. This is another bit that I tried with the anodizing still on and really didn't make much progress with the flap wheel. What I'm going to be using to strip it is oven cleaner. Um, this is caustic. Aluminium reacts with caustic soda, sodium hydroxide. This is obviously a bit milder than using pure caustic soda, but you've still got to be careful and you've, I wouldn't leave it on for more than 10 minutes. You wouldn't do this indoors, and if, you, if you're using oven cleaner in an oven, wear gloves and all that sort of stuff, but I'm just going to do it out here and keep my distance. So that's had 15 minutes now. Actually, I was feeling a bit gung-ho. It didn't look like it was bubbling radically or attacking the metal in any severe way. So now I'm just going to hose all that off. When you do this, you might find that your metal actually even goes black. You can see that bit that I that polished bit that I showed you before has been a, been kind of attacked by the, the caustic and it's gone a bit black. Okay, so a couple of days later, here's my front subframe. It's gone a kind of a chalky white where the oven cleaner's been on it. This is called a flap wheel. It's a bunch of square leaves of 80 grit, in this case uh, red oxide type sandpaper, bonded onto a shaft which you can put in your drill. The leaves actually bend as you go so that it's not rigid and, and a little difference in pressure isn't going to make a huge difference to how much you actually cut into the metal or anything like that, not with a rigid wheel on a grinder where if you put too much pressure on you're going to dig straight in. So there we go, I've probably spent an hour, hour and a half on that to get into some of the really tricky spots. I'm afraid I had to resort to the wire wheel which is not something I really wanted to do because it has a tendency to gouge at the aluminium but there are a couple of spots like around here where I kind of just had to use it. I'd like to polish it back to a satin finish and then coat it with clear but I don't think it's going to look very good if you do that. It's going to look a bit homemade. So I'm going to clean that off now, make sure I get any metal dust and stuff off it and then I'm going to etch prime it. So the next thing we're going to move on to is this etch primer. This stuff is really good for painting aluminium and other sort of smoother surfaces that don't, might not hold the paint very well. What it does is it just kind of eats into the surface a little bit and provides something for the paint to bite on when you actually put your paint on. I've got a little cheap charcoal mask that I'm just going to put on because the less of this stuff you breathe in the better really. So there it is, hung on the side of my shed ready to be painted. I've chosen a Ford Magnum Grey, which I like. So I've mixed equal parts paint and thinners that I got from the paint shop. That's my gravity fed spray gun hanging on the clothesline. Air compressor borrowed from Trent. This paint I'm using isn't two-pack, but I've got this mask for when I use my two-pack lacquer. I'm going to wear it anyway because it's not a good thing to be breathing in solvents and stuff, so I'll put it on.
all the base coat is on and now it just needs to be coated with clear two-pack lacquer. I'm very happy with how it's looking so far. A couple of days later, subframe hung up again, ready to coat with two-pack lacquer, which consists of the lacquer itself, a hardener, and you use thinners to get it through the gun. This stuff is hazardous and you've got to use breathing protection. Make sure you've got a mask of the right grading. Use it outdoors and if you were using it indoors in a confined space you have to have all sorts of special respirator gear. So use it outdoors with a proper mask. Once you've mixed everything together you're on limited time to be able to use it or it will harden in your gun. It will go off initially and just not become any good to paint with and then it'll just go hard and you'll have a gun full of the stuff and you've ruined your gun. So there we go, out in the sunshine, there's my subframe, lack it up, it's still drying though, but once it's dry and hardened, which will take a while, ready to go back on the bike. So, is it a perfect job? Probably not. I'm not a professional, but it looks a lot better than it did. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs>